to say a big welcome to each and every one of you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please stay where you are. I got a word for you that I believe will be a great blessing to your faith and to your walk with the Lord. Our theme for today is titled, Now Faith. Yes, Now Faith as compared to faith in the by and by, as compared to blue moon type of faith. Maybe I should say as contrasted with, well, you get my point. We're talking about now faith. The one that believes in God for right now, the one that believes God can do it, not by and by. The one that believes God can do it ultimately, but the one that's trusting God to do it right now. Oh, this word you're about to hear is bound to change your faith for the better. So stay where you are and get ready for an eye opening encounter. An encounter with the Word of God as you hear a faith transforming word from God today. But I don't want you to partake of this all by yourself. Please notify a friend, tell a neighbor, and share the link to the platform you're watching us on or you are listening to us on. So someone you know, or someone who knows you, will be blessed by what you're about to hear. Everybody deserves to be part of this. Now, while you do that, let me go ahead and make my usual announcements. Of course, it begins with the podcast, Bishop Itiola's podcast. You can access the podcast by downloading my podcast app on the Google Play Store for those of you that use the Android phone, yes. Or you can listen directly on the Spreaker app, which can be downloaded for both the Android and the Apple phone. Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. You'll be joining listeners from over 50 countries around the world that have downloaded over 105,000 episodes. I implore you to please help us share the links let others know so they can be blessed. Don't forget our presence is on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're also on MixLR. And of course, we're on TV in some countries. Guyana. I love that country. We're there. RBS TV 13. Every Saturday we are on that powerful station from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's the local time. And we're also in 23 Caribbean island countries through Mercy and Truth TV in the great country of Jamaica. Every Saturday, we are on from 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. local time. We're on there every Wednesday also, early in the morning, local time at 1.30 a.m. Turn us in, and you're going to be blessed. I pray that God will bless the owners and the employees of those TV stations and the great countries of Jamaica and Guyana and all the other Caribbean island countries. Please don't forget to join us also on Fresh Waves Radio. That's our own radio station. We're on 24-7. And on that station, you can listen to a variety of programming that has been a blessing to so many people. And I believe it will be a blessing to you also. Fresh Waves Radio. You can download the app for both the Android and the Apple phones from their respective app stores. Just type in Fresh Waves Radio, install the app, and you are good to go. Please help us spread the word. And don't forget to join me this Thursday and this Friday 
on my own Facebook page live at 7 p.m. New York time. Oh, the prayers for this week, you don't want to miss them. Many people's lives have been impacted by these prayers. And I really believe you will join us this week. You will see what I mean. You know the old saying, a trial will convince you. Please join us this Thursday, this Friday, for a life-changing experience praying at the throne of grace. On my Facebook, personal Facebook page, but we're also on the church's Facebook page pages. We're also on YouTube. We're mixing our God is doing great things. Thank God for COVID. As bad as COVID was, it really opened the door for ministry for many of us. And for that, we give God the praise. Those are my announcements for today. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall upon me right now. Help me to be able to communicate the truth to your people on the subject of now faith. Have your way, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people everywhere said, Amen. Now faith. That right there is an important aspect of our spiritual journey. We all know about faith, that we connect with the divine and experience the transformative power of God in our lives through faith in Him. And that beautiful scripture in the book of Hebrews provides a very profound definition of what faith is. Hebrews 11, 1 is a scripture everybody knows. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm taking those two words and joining them and making a real big deal out of them. Now, faith. The faith that is now. That scripture you see there, shows us the essence of what faith is all about. It is a substance, it is the very essence of our hopes and of our dreams in God. It is the evidence, the assurance of things that we cannot yet see or we cannot yet fully comprehend. But we're taking those two words and making a big deal out of it in this summer. Now, faith. Now, faith is about living in the present moment. It's about fully trusting in God's promises and in God's provisions. Now, faith is an active and vibrant type of faith that transcends the limitations of human understanding. It is a faith that says, I believe in God's goodness. I believe in God's faithfulness right here and right now. Can I repeat that? Now faith is the one that says, I believe in God's goodness. And I believe in the faithfulness of the Lord right here and right now. Hear me. It is one thing to believe that it shall be done by and by. But it is another thing to believe that it shall be done right now. You see, it is one thing to believe it can be done. But it is another thing to believe that it is being done done right now. I can say this to you. This message really impacted my life. Just getting ready for it. Let me give you a classic example that jumped out at me as I was preparing for this sermon. Mary, for example, he be she believed that Lazarus shall rise in the great resurrection day. But Jesus was not going to take any of that. 
because Jesus moved in the right now faith for Lazarus. Let's look at the scripture in John 11 and verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know, listen to this, that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask God, God will give it to you. That sounds perfect. You would have thought that this lady was manifesting a now faith. But you see, it's one thing to talk that you have a now faith, but it's another thing for you to manifest that faith. So many times when it comes to faith, what we talk and how we act just don't add up. Let me read what she said again in verse 22. But I know that even now, whatsoever that I will ask of God, he will give it to me. Now listen to this now. You will have said, wow, this lady believes in the now faith. Check this out in verse 23. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, now listen to Martha now. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. But I ask, what about the, I believe that whatsoever you ask the Father now, he will give it to you. That one has been tossed out. And that's what happens to us many times. We say great things that looks like we believe God, like we believe God in the now. Unfortunately, she just discarded that. That Christ, whatever he asked God, now God will do it. No. Uh, my brother will rise up, not now, but, you know, at the resurrection. John eleven thirty eight. Now listen to this. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, coming to the grave, as it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Now Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Well, you knew all that, and then you still said, whatever you are as a father now, he will give it to you. You know, many times the magnitude of our problems, they make us to look away from the word of God and from the things that we speak out of our mouths. Whatever you ask God now, he will give it to you. Unfortunately, this one, ah, God won't be bothered because it's four days old in the grave. So Jesus replied in verse 40, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Oh, they had had a discussion along these lines before, because that's what that verse is saying. You know the difference between Jesus and this lady? Of course, and these two ladies. Jesus believed in the right now. His faith is a now faith. God is doing it now. But they are believing, eh, it will rise up many years to come at the resurrection. You know what you and I need? The now faith. I don't want to blame Mary too much, and I don't want to blame Martha too much, because they are like you and I. And I pray that God will use what you hear today to really touch you and change your faith and change the way you look at God. Listen, my friends, 
It is easy to believe that God will walk. All right? Well, believe God will walk. God can do anything. But it is very difficult for many of us to believe that God is walking right now. It's easy to believe that God is God will walk on my situation. God will walk on my problems. But it is very difficult to believe that God is walking on it right now. That is what now faith is. Now faith not only deals with the far past and with the years that are still hidden behind the veil, now faith is the radiant belief for the present hour and it sees the hands of God at work today. The big question is, what does right now faith say versus maybe by and by faith? What does God will do it now say compared to God will eventually do it? Two different things, two different types of manifestation of faith. Now faith, number one, makes a clear decision. That's what clear faith does. Now faith, rather. Now faith makes a very clear decision. It doesn't hold between two opinions as to whether God will do it now or God will do it later. It's sure God will do it now. Now that was one of the qualities that qualified Abraham to be called the father of faith. He was a man that believed that God can do it now and God will do it now. Remember when he was told to take his only son to sacrifice? How did he act? Now faith. He acted immediately. When you don't have faith manifesting, you delay and you prolong and you procrastinate. Oh God, you want me to take this son? Let's go, Isaac. Why did he do that? Because he believed, the Bible tells us, that even if God, if, if God allowed him to kill him, God was still raising from the dead. Because there were promises for his life concerning this child. So this child is not going to die. I'm standing on the word of God. And I'm decided I will do what God says I should do. Because I know God will do what he says he will do. Now, faith is a faith that makes a clear decision. But number two, now faith always moves into action. Now faith is an action faith. The Bible tells us very clearly in the book of James that faith without works is dead. When you have a now faith, you act now. In James chapter 2, verse 14, we read, What of it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed, and be ye filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so faith, verse 17 says, if it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. Yea, the man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble, but will thou know, O vain man, verse 20, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? That's the story I just told you. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and it was called a friend of God. 
You see then how that by works in man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab, you remember old Rahab the harlot, I'll tell you more about that momentarily, was justified by works, she acted, her faith was now, I'll tell you more later. When she had received the messengers, the spies, and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Listen, faith that works has works. Can I repeat that? Faith that works has works. We demonstrate our faith by our actions. So when you say you have a now faith, then you know you are acting and you are doing something about it right now. You know, many are crippled today because of a lack of action. They are afraid to make a move in case ah, this thing may be outside God's will. Well, let me say this to you. Have you ever sat down in a car with the engine turned off? You know you will not be able to steer a motionless car anywhere until it is moving. It is when the car is moving, you are able to turn it to the right or turn it to the left. God does not tend to guide people who are motionless. Don't get me wrong now. There is a time to wait on God for future direction. And I believe in that. However, the Bible abounds with examples upon examples, and I'll show some of them to you today of the call of God coming to busy people. People who are not sitting around waiting for guidance without first stepping into action. For example, the children of Israel in Hebrews 11, 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. I want you to imagine something. Can you imagine the people saying to Joshua, their leader, Oh, Josh, can't we just wait over there in our tent and just blow the trumpets over there and yell out a couple of praise and worship songs and then the walls will come down? No, 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 no. Now faith has feet. Do you hear what I said? Now faith has feet. And it moves into action when the decision has been made. It positions itself for victory, for action, and for the hand of God to come through. Now, faith is an action type of faith. But there's a third thought that I would like to share with you about now faith. Now faith sees the future already accomplished before it ever happens. And I repeat that. Now faith sees the future already accomplished before it ever happens. Hebrews 11, 1 again. What is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet See, confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. That is the now time of faith. Paul the Apostle, and I think I've read it on this program before, manifested this in Philippians, chapter 1 in uh, Philemon, rather, chapter 1 in verse 22. It says, But withal, prepare me also a lodging. For I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. That right there is now faith. Now faith prepares. Now faith gets ready for what it believes God for. They were still praying for him. They were still seeking God for his release. But he was already saying, oh, please get me an apartment that I will stay when I'm released. But you are not released yet. Yes, I know I'm not released yet. 
But prayers are going on for my release. And I believe now that because prayers have started, the door is going to open for me to be released. What a beautiful example of now faith. Some will wait until they call them to court. Some will wait until the final appeal is heard before they get their apartment. No, 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 Paul said, go get an apartment ready. We're praying, I'm coming out. That one right there is faith. And I think I've told you on this program before of a lady that came to a women's conference we had in New York, and she was believing God for a girl, and she just came to the camp and brought baby clothes, and it was, she said, it's a girl I want, and here are girls' clothes. And she bought a whole set of them and said, I'm using this as a point of contact for prayer. That is now faith. Guess what happened? She came back to that conference the following year with a baby girl that she gave birth to. Well, we don't live by faith. We live by whatever other picture is held in our minds. You see, he said, prepare a place for me. I'm envisaging I'm going to be out of there. Faith is not pretending. No, 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 no. It's not pretending that it's there. Faith is not hoping that it is there. It is not just imagining that it is there. No. Faith knows it's there because it has the substance of the experience. It has the substance of the thing because it exists inside of me. I know it exists. I pray that God will let you see this concept. That if you see it, you can have it. If you believe it, you can receive it. Look at Abraham and God. Speaking of the nation that will come out of his loins, even though Isaac was yet unborn. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, in verse 17. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. Wait a minute. The God that we serve is a now faith God. God went to a man who had no baby. God went to a man who medically has no hope of having a baby. And he said, I have made you the father of many nations. How can I be the father of many nations when my wife cannot even get pregnant? By virtue of her age, God said, it's done. God works in now faith. And he wants you also to walk in now faith. And what happened? It happened. Because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life, like we said earlier, and who brings into existence what never existed before, and that is Isaac. God said, I have made you. Does that sound like present or past tense? God said it's done. Yet Abraham was 90 years old. And God said, I've already done it. His wife was past the age of bearing child. Yet God was speaking to Abraham as if he had already got the baby. That's now faith. Hallelujah. Now is the time. Quit waiting for a better season, Abraham. You're going to get it. Another classic example was the crossing of Jordan. Remember how they crossed Jordan because uh, they were going to invade Jericho and get into their promised land? You remember what happened to River Jordan at that time? The river was swollen and overflowing its banks. And as many of you know, the Jordan feeds from the snow that is melting from Mount Harmon. On the other side of the flooded, swollen Jordan River lied the most fortified city, the city of Jericho that they were to go and possess. Jericho also knew that God's people were coming. So for years, they were prepared. They built one wall, then they built another wall, then they built another wall, and it became a big, wide wall. 
So if you climb one wall to climb onto the next wall, you are jumping down and falling down in the space behind it. That's just my imagination, please. Don't get me wrong. But God said, I don't care. They can make it more difficult. Now faith gets it done. Do you know this? Know how difficult things may be, how seemingly impossible things may look. If you have the now kind of faith, you're going to have it. You know what is amazing is this. Why did God choose for them to cross Jordan when it was a very bad time? The area was flooded. Why didn't you, well, God, why don't you choose a time when the river was not this flooded? Because Nisan is a month of the beginning of rain. And God, I love God. He had picked that time he had picked that season because crossing Jordan's swollen river will make it very difficult than any other time of the year. But well, God did it. In the month of that nation, the flood waters were higher and deeper than any time of the year. It made the crossing of Jordan impossible except by the mighty hand of God and by the one that had the now kind of faith Listen, my friends, if you are going to overcome the barriers and the blockages in your way, you've got to have the now kind of faith. All the obstacles, all the barriers that will hinder you, that will block the uh, divine timing for your life and the opening of doors of miracle. You know what will make it happen? Now faith. Now faith. The greatest test. It's going to be people stepping into that water. It's a great test. Even when it does not make sense, the great test of now faith is now. But don't you see this doesn't make sense? Now we are crossing. Step into the water. God's promises. It's on the other side of that Florida river. Step inside it. I love now faith. And I pray that God will give you an eye. Now faith. Now faith. The faith now, 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 now. Now faith doesn't wait for the perfect conditions, people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant move, the Bible says be ready because you're going to cross. And in Joshua 3.3 3 we read, and they commanded the people saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, all right, and the priests, you see them also, and they are ready to move, then move after it and go forward. Wow. It's now. You know, it's like you place a two-year-old in a baby seat in the back of a car. The child does not know where they are going. The child does not know when they will get there. But there's something the child knows, and maybe a couple of things the child knows. Daddy is behind the wheels. I can trust them. The child does not know if they have enough gas, enough petrol, like we say in Africa. The child does not know whether daddy has enough money to buy more gasoline in case they need gasoline. The child never looked at the tread of the tires of the car to be sure it is well treaded. The child does not care about when the last oil change was done. Does dad know where we are going? All the child knows is, that's my daddy. The child trusts him for the ride because he trusts his daddy enough to know everything will be all right. Because my daddy loves me. My daddy will watch over me. My daddy will not let me be stranded on the road. My daddy will uphold me in his strong arms. Do you have God as your daddy? It's better than your daddy in the world. Why don't you sit back and enjoy the ride of your life and not 
preoccupy yourself with worry and anxiety and trouble in your soul because of what you are believing God for. Now faith believes that I'm not alone in this ride. Papa, let's go. You now we we'll find numerous examples of individuals in the Bible that demonstrated now faith. And I wanted to join them because these were people of like passion like you and I. And if they can believe God now, then you also can believe God now. Let's go back to Abraham again. He's often referred to as the father of faith. And again and again, he exemplified now faith. Remember when God called him to leave his homeland and go to a place that he will show him? You know, that one is amazing. <laughs> God said, all right, come out. Go to a place that I will show you. He even had no destination. <laughs> it's not like God told him, all right, you are going to this place, you are going to this place. You know, he didn't have a ticket that had a destination with him. He just got up. That is now faith. God told me to go. I'm just going to obey you. Without knowing the details of the journey ahead. Now faith enabled him to step out. Trusting that God will guide him and fulfill his promises. Abraham's faith was in the present moment. That's the key. Abraham's faith was in the present moment. He didn't wait for ideal circumstances. He didn't wait for complete understanding. Instead, he believed God's word and he acted upon it. That is what now faith is. You know, similarly, we see the story of the woman with the issue of blood. You remember her. She reached out and touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. And she was here. She didn't wait for a more convenient time or a better opportunity. She believed that Jesus had the power to heal her. In that very moment, her faith wasn't based on what might happen in the future, but on the present reality. That Jesus is here, his power is here, his mercy is here, I'm going to reach out and touch him. But guess what? Big crowd around Jesus. Now faith, now faith will press through any barrier. Now faith will press through any hindrance. The Bible says she pressed her way in, pressed her way in. And if you saw her, where is this woman going? That's a woman that has a now faith to get what she wanted from Jesus. Did she get it? You know the story as much as I do. She's been going from doctor to doctor. She never got it. But she got it from Jesus. Will you believe Jesus right now for what you need? Seriously. Will you believe Jesus right now? Or you're believing him for by and by, maybe 10 years I'll get it, maybe 20 years I'll get it. What stops you from getting it now? Now faith is defined as a substance and a reality. What you hope for and what you are seeing. Do you see it? Then go for it. God is on your side. Show you another interesting story in Mark chapter 10, in verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, there was a man called Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, who sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then some people went and charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more a great deal, thou Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible tells us Jesus stood still. 
Now, the guy was saying, no, 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 don't stop me. You are not the ones that are blind. I'm the one that is blind. I'm the one that needs a miracle. Nobody is going to stop me. I'm not going to wait till the next time it passes by here. I don't know when next it will pass by here. Now faith will say, now is my opportunity. I'm going to go get it. And what happened? Jesus stood still. Now faith makes Jesus stand still. And they commanded him to be called. And the same people that were driving him away, they called the blind man saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise. He called the I thought you told him to shut up. Listen, when you manifest now faith, situations that are telling you to shut up will end up shutting up. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? I'm not looking for an offering. No, the blind man said that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. My Lord, we love you. When you manifest it now, faith that say, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. No, the faith of by and by will pray for about 10 minutes, 20 minutes and say, well, I guess God is not going to do this then. But the now faith says, no, I'm not giving quiet. I'm not going to let God go unless he blesses me. And Jesus comes to a halt and say, something is pulling at me. Some faith is pulling at me. And then he releases his virtue, his healing, and his deliverance. Are you one of those that abandon prayers after a while? You prayed about it for one day, prayed about it for one week, prayed about it for one month, that nothing is coming. Then you say, well, you're Maybe this thing is too big to happen by and by. No. It's your time. It's your season. Go get it. Don't throw away your faith. Let me show you a lady that Jesus even encouraged to throw away her faith. And she said, no, I came with a now faith to you. I'm not going anywhere. Matthew chapter 15 verse 21. And Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and she worshipped him, saying, Lord, please help me. And he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Wow. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now faith. The lady said, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what even Jesus himself says. I'm not going to let him go unless he blesses me. Well, what about calling you a dog? It doesn't matter. No, I'm not a dog. What am I saying? This thing is not meant for you. I know it might not be meant for me, but crumbs fall from the tables of those that it is meant for. I'll eat the crumbs. Because she had a now faith. Won't be dissuaded. Won't be pushed aside. Won't take no for an answer. And guess what happened? She got the miracle she was looking for. There are many discouragements in the, faith of, in the face of faith. There are many things that will happen to you that you'll say, well, I guess it's, it's not possible. It's not going to happen. And then you give up. Now faith. We we'll look at all obstacles. We we'll look at all hindrances and we we'll just laugh and shove it aside. 
and hold on to the hands of the altar and say, what I need, you got it. I'm not going to let you go until you release it to me. God is looking for that kind of faith, not the fly-by-night one, not the blue moon type of faith, but the one that believes God that it is right now. I want my daughter healed. And what is so beautiful here is that the daughter that she wanted healed, she wanted healing and deliverance for was not even present. Yes, she received a miracle for her. You know, you can receive a miracle for your son who doesn't even pray, for your daughter who doesn't even go to church. Your faith can bring the miracle that you need. Let's travel forward a little bit to Joshua chapter 6 in verse 21. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. I'm reading about the story of Rahab the harlot. Both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, ass, and so on and so forth, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out this the woman and all that she had, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab. Listen to this now. They brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burned down the city with fire and all that were there. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot's life and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. What a beautiful story. That was a woman, a harlot for that matter, that had what I like to call the now kind of faith. She said to the spies, I know Jericho is gone. I know you're going to win this war. You know, you have that gut feeling. You just add two and two together, and something is just telling you on the inside. This is going to happen. You got to key in your faith to that. And so she keyed in her faith, hid the uh, spies until they left, and they said, we'll be back, and we'll rescue you when we come against the city. But guess what she did? She believed that this is going to happen, and it's going to happen now. It's going to happen very soon. So what she did? She called daddy. She called mommy. She called her. Brethren and everything that she had. Do you know that because she was a prostitute, she didn't have a husband, so she didn't call her husband. But she called everybody together and they said, Why are you calling us? They said, There's a destruction coming. Now faith prepares for the ultimate. What preparation are you making for your breakthrough? What preparation are you making for what is going to happen? There are people watching me right now. You know, Jesus is coming. There are people watching me right now. You know, tomorrow may be too late. And you're still living any way you want. You're still living carelessly. There are people who know that death can come at any time, but they live as if death will never come. This is now faith, people. No wonder the Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Don't postpone it till tomorrow. Like someone I'm going to read to you in a few minutes today. Let's move to another man that really believed in the now faith and acted now. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. And there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A very devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Lord coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa 
and call for one Simon, whose son name is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel who spake unto Cornelius was departed, now faith. He called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. That is a now faith man. He could have said, well, I don't even know whether the vision I saw was right or not. Mm -mm. Now faith is an action faith. You believe it, you act on it, and you get the result. There are people that have dreams that they ought to act on and they never acted. I'll never, 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 never forget. Lord, forgive me. God gave me a particular dream repeatedly, 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 repeatedly. That there was something that the enemy was planning to steal from me. And I took it lightly until literally the day came and the enemy stole that thing. And I can never recover it back again. It still hurts my spirit till tomorrow. Now, why did I have so many warnings, but no now faith to act on what God was telling me? Don't be careless like I was. But in this case, it was his soul. Don't be careless with your soul. God has been warning you, you need to surrender yourself to him. You need to give your life to him. You need to become a Christian. What are you waiting for? Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. So immediately he saw that, man, he sent this man out. Please go bring Peter. God said he should come here and tell me how to get to him. But look at now faith. Before Peter got there, he had assembled his whole family. Look at it in verse 24. And the morrow after, Peter and the rest of his group entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and his near friends. Can you imagine that? God didn't tell him to do that. God said, he will come and show you the way of salvation. But now faith will make sure the blessing also flows to other people. So he called his kinsfolk and his friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And Peter took him up, saying, stand up by myself also, I'm a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many were there come together. Wow. Now faith. He believed it so strongly. I think our problem is we don't believe it so strongly. And we don't believe God so strongly for whatever the eat is in our lives. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is a lawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. Or come unto one of another nation, but God has showed me that I shall not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I to you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked, Therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? And Cornelius said four days ago, he told him the whole story. And Cornelius said something that I lost so much. He said, Well, Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast done well to come. Why will he not come? He was a now faith guy. And many of us, God will tell us to do something now. We'll wait and wait and wait. I can tell you stories that I will shock you on that. People that God will tell, do this, do that, and they will postpone and postpone and postpone until it is too late. And Cornelius said, it is good that thou hast come now. Therefore, we are all here, present before God, to hear all the things that are commanded thee of God. That's how they got saved. Because Cornelius had a now faith, and Peter himself had a now faith, and it led to the salvation of souls. Compare that to this guy called Felix in Acts 24, 24. The Bible says, after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as Paul reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, the Bible says Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, 
When I have a convenient season, I will call on thee. Did you hear that? When I have a convenient season, I'll call you to come and say this again. He didn't have a now faith. If he had a now faith, he would have said, tell me how to get saved like the eunuch of Ethiopia did. But this guy had a buy and buy faith, but still have time. There's no record he ever got saved. Why don't you do it now? If you have not given your life to Christ, now is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Let your life be changed. Remember Noah? When God called Noah and warned him, the Bible says he moved with fear in Hebrews 11, 7, and he prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. He surrendered his life to build the ark. He brought his people in, now faith. He preached righteousness, but nobody came except his immediate family. And the people that will have come in were replaced by animals that came. Don't let an animal have more faith and righteousness than you. Has God been telling you to do it? Do it now. Tomorrow may be too late. I can tell you many more examples, but it is obvious from this few that I told you that faith really and truly works, especially the now faith. So as I go over the air, I want to admonish you to live your life fully in the present moment. Begin to trust God and his plans for your life. Let us let go of our fears and doubts and step out in obedience. Knowing that God is with you, my friend. I just pray that you will be like Abraham. Pray that you'll be like the woman with the issue of blood. I pray that you'll be like many other great men and women of faith that manifested the now faith in God and they saw the hand of God. And I pray for you as I go up the air. Father, I pray for myself also and I pray for everyone that is watching me or listening to me today. I pray that you give us the faith of the present, the faith of the moment. And God is able to do it here. And God is able to do it now. Deliver us, O God, from postponing what we want you to do. Lord, heal us now. Save us now. Deliver us now. And bless us now. Let that be our faith. The now kind of faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back again next week. Keep on manifesting the now faith until then. Bye-bye.